And so here is the last example for testing a hypothesis about a proportion using the p-value method. The question reads, last year the percent of students that rented textbooks was 27%. The bookstore claims that the percent has decreased this year. They survey 50 students and discover that 25.1% rented textbooks. Use the p-value method with a significance level of 0.02 to test the bookstore's claim. Now notice this problem just says significance level of 0.02. A lot of times we might just say alpha equals 0.02, but it's the same thing. Okay, so I'm always looking for where is the part that is the claim, and we're fortunate because this time it actually says the bookstore claims. So then what comes after that? That they claim that the percent has decreased. So down here in H0 and H1, I want to put P is decreased, P is less than. Be careful because if you keep reading, you might put the wrong number. Remember, it's the existing fact, the existing data that's being challenged. So since the only information we have is about last year being 27%, I need to put 27% as my claim. And I always choose to put it as a decimal number because I'm going to be putting it into a math formula in a few minutes. If P less than 0.27 is the claim, then H0, the null hypothesis, is P equals 0.27. Okay, I'm ready to find my test statistic and figure out which formula I'm going to use. Remember, since I'm testing a claim about a proportion, I need to use the proportion test statistic formula which is p hat minus p divided by the square root of p times q divided by n. So now I need to go ahead and find the parts. The first piece I need is p hat. Sometimes we have to find p hat, sometimes p hat is given. In this case, the survey of the 50 students, the sample, discovered that 25.1% rented. So this 25.1% is only about the 50 students, so that's my sample proportion and I'm already given to it is a percent, so I don't need to convert, I don't need to find p hat, other than I do want to change a percent to a decimal. Then I need to subtract p. And remember, you could reread the question, or you could always kind of cheat and over off to h naught, the side where h naught is. We have what p equals, p equals 0.27. Then we divide by the square root of p. Remember, p is the same p we just wrote, so 0.27. And then I need Q, which is 1 minus 0.27 or 0.73. And then we need to divide by our sample size. And as you reread the question, it says the survey of 50 students. So that's my sample size. Now I'm not sure if you've struggled entering these into your calculator as of yet. So just a little help. That I like to have the top half in its own parentheses set. So parentheses, the subtraction, and then end parentheses so that I don't have to worry about order of operation issues with my calculator. Then I want to divide by the bottom piece. And so I start with a parentheses to begin the bottom. In this problem, since it's a square root, and if you can enter your square root button first, you don't really need that parentheses, but it's kind of habit. If you don't have a square root button on your calculator, maybe you have to hit shift or second and then you're x squared, wherever it is. But here's the part a lot of people mess up on. Because I tend to write the formula with all these parentheses, when you go to enter it in your calculator, if you include that first ending parentheses, it stops the square root. So once I start the square root, I'm just gonna go through the data to process without using any more parentheses. So 0.27 times 0.73 divided by 50 with no parentheses, and then I can do an end parentheses, which you don't even actually need, and then my equal or my enter. So once you've entered this correctly into your calculator, you should get negative 0 0.302618, etc. We always tend to answer our test statistic with anywhere from two to four digits after the decimal. And I just went with two digits, so negative 0.30 after rounding. So next thing I need to do is find my p-value. And remember, the p-value always starts with the test statistic, negative 0.30 in this case. 
And now I need to find the area to the closest edge, the closest tail, which since negative 30 is to the left of center, the closest edge will be to the left, which fortunately for us is how the Z table works. So I don't have to do any special manipulation. So I go to the edge of the Z table and I'm looking for my test statistic. So row negative 0.3, column 0, 0, and I find the number 0 0.3821. Since this is the area to the left, I don't need to do 1 minus any interior table number. Also, um, I do not double the table number since I do not have a two-tail test. Why do I say it's not two-tail? Remember, the alternate hypothesis uses less than, so it's just a left tail test. And lastly, p-value is area, so it's never negative. Now, if I had a left tail test um, critical value, it would have to be negative. But even though this is a left tail test, p-value is area, so it's never negative. And so now I need to decide whether I reject or fail to reject h naught. The rule is if the p-value is less than alpha, reject H0. So is 0 0.3821 less than alpha? And remember, it's your significance level that's alpha, so 0 0.02. And I always say if you're confused comparing a four-digit number to a two-digit number, we're always allowed to add zeros at the end of a decimal value like that. So I can think of it as 3,821. Is that less than 200? which it is not, so we fail. Fail to reject H0. Always be sure to put that H0. So even though the claim is H1, it's the population parameter that's being challenged. And so I go to my flow chart and H1 was my claim, but I failed to reject H0. So my final conclusion starts, there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that and then as I reread the question, be careful because this sentence just says, you know, the bookstore claims that the percent has decreased this year. I definitely want to talk about percent decreasing, but I need the context of what we're studying, students that rented textbooks, and the old or prior percent. So my sentence will now read, support the claim that the percent of students that rent textbooks has decreased from 27%. I've got percent, which is the um, population parameter being challenged, the context, which is students who, that rent textbooks, what the claim is specifically that that percent decreased, and lastly, what did it decrease from, 27%. And there you go.